What's up everyone, in this video I'll tell you all about Sylph Arena Factions, my favorite way to play PvP at the moment. And my squad, the EU Emperors, actually managed to make it to the World Championship Finals. So I'll be showing some amazing battles, we had a longer way of getting there. And I'll also explain you what factions are about and how you can join it yourself. Let's start with one of the most exciting matches we had in the semi-finals of the World Championship, it's the Nut93, my teammate, versus Lindos Crusoe of Magnus PvP, who are the best faction uh, in Latin America. And these two trainers are both beasts in Ultra League, and they're going at it right now with a Lugia into the Pidget uh, lead. This is kind of neutral. The Pidget is kind of a pain, uh, to be honest, because no shielding a Brave Bird, and you take a lot of damage, and shielding a Feather Dance, and your attack is dropped, so it's not great. This is probably a Brave Bird, but Lugia is in a, such a tank, it can still take this. Uh, the Knight expects the Pidget to switch out immediately, since its defense is dropped, so it goes into the Swampert, since it is pretty safe against all of uh, Grassau's team, which, by the way, his team is in the top right there. Uh, this world championship had a bit of a weird format where you had a team of eight and you could ban two i'll talk more about that later first the obstagoon gets a freaking boost and this is a big problem the obstagoon is basically good against all of the nuts team of course it destroys rare steel and galarian stunfisk it's neutral against swampert and polytoad but now that it has a boost it kind of destroys him and the Lugia, even though it resists the counter, still takes super effective from the Night Slasher. So this was looking like a tough matchup for the Nut, no matter what. With a boosted Obstagoon, honestly, almost seems almost impossible. But if anyone makes the impossible possible, it is the Nut. So let's see what he can do here. Brings in the point out, takes a Night Slash that does quite a bit of damage for a very weak move. But of course, it is boosted. Gonna throw a Weather Ball here. Onto the gun, will bring him quite low, unfortunately, not low enough though, at this point, I think you take this, and you switch to Lugia, yeah, you do switch to Lugia, hopefully farm this down before it gets to another Night Slash, barely able to knock it out uh, before it can die with the move there, I'm pretty sure, now, it's an S Cavalier in the back, this thing dies to one Arrow Blast, and... Crusau knows that, catches the move, but the nut saw it coming and threw a sky attack right when the pigeon came in, farms it down, can he reach the arrow blast, Escoff cannot farm down with counters, throws the arrow blast, is this enough to knock out? <laughs> Takes out the S Cavalier and wins the game. Really insane stuff. Now all these matches, they are best of three. Uh, the Nut actually ended up going 2-1 versus uh, Kurosawa, but I won't be showing all the battles since that would just be a really long video. If you want to see every single one of our battles though, or matches in the quarter and semi-finals of the World Championships were live streamed, so I'll put a link to those videos in the description. And even more exciting, the finals are gonna get live streamed as well. This Thursday, 23 or 11 p.m., uh, Central European time or whatever that is in your time zone on the Silver Arena Twitch channel the finals will be held so make sure sure to tune into that if you want to see some epic battles. So what is Sil Factions all about? Essentially it's a team-based competitive Pokemon Go PvP league. Each team or faction as we like to call it is built up of seven battlers and potentially three extra players as alternate. On each team, the battlers are divided into specific roles. We have the Great League Specialist, the Ultra League Specialist, and the Master League Specialist, which will be playing in their respective leagues. And then four field, that's three, four field specialists per team, which uh, will be playing in the field meta, which is every cycle that's a different meta. But usually it's it's a format which with some typing restrictions. In the upcoming cycle, we'll be playing in the Alchemy and Colony metas. You'll face off against another faction every single week and which one you'll face is dependent on what region you're playing in because factions is divided into four regions, Europe, North America, Asia Pacific and Latin America and then also your ranking. Ranking in factions consists of a bunch of tiers from the open tier to the emerald tier and you'll always be playing uh, factions within your tier and if you do well you move up, if you do bad you move down. Simple enough. One short battling 
It's 7 v 7. Your Great League Specialist will be able to play their Great League Specialist. Your Master League Specialist will play their Master League Specialist. And your Field Specialist will play their Field Specialist. And so on and so forth. Every single player plays 3 games. That's 21 games total. So first, uh, Team 2, 11 points, wins the bout. Now, I might be wondering if you're essentially just playing 1v1 anyway, where does the teamwork come in? And, you know, I get that. But there's so much teamwork involved. My team, the EOMs, has spent so many nights, you know, just team building with each other. And even during the battles, we're always, like, in a voice call uh, with the group, uh, you know, helping each other out with our fights. And honestly, that, that added element of teamwork makes, makes it so much more fun than any, like, individual battle you could do. So, how do you join? I will tell you after this battle. This next battle is from the quarterfinals of the World Championships where we are facing Infinity Go White, one of the best Latin American uh, factions, and I'm facing Vanny in the Comet Field meta. Anyone that has ever played Sylv probably knows Vanny. He's the number one ranked player at the moment on the Sylv leaderboards. Incredibly strong, and there was so much pressure on this match. We were the final ones to battle, and it was 9-9. Nine, nine. We were tied. Whoever wins this best of three wins the bout and moves on to the semifinals of the World Championship. I lead my Diggers B into the Mew. Vanny brings in the Bandabus, a Pokemon I was worried about on my team, which you can see on the bottom right there. Uh, only real hard answer to the Bandabus uh, is the Macargo, which I was afraid to bring because his uh, Vigoroth, Diggers B, and Mew are all very strong against it. So he safe switches it. I bring in my Frostlass. This is not an amazing matchup because with some Snarls, the Foul Play will knock me out. He hasn't done enough snarls yet though, so I know I can take this. I will I will let it go at this point. Brings me deep into the red. I go for another avalanche. If I burn another shield here, that's fine with me. I'm running Diggers B with Hyper Beam, uh, which is really good in this meta uh, when shields are down. Uh, I'm just going to take a couple foul plays here. My goal here is... Uh, I'm kind of expecting a Vigoroth in the back since he needs like a solid answer to my Diggers B, but Vigoroth still takes a lot of damage from Hyper Beam. So my plan here is farm up a bunch of energy after I throw his Hyper Beam, because the Diggers B still doesn't die, uh, and then hopefully I can Fire Punch it, or did I say Diggers B? I mean Manibuzz didn't die. Then I can Fire Punch this Manibuzz, and then hopefully still get to the Hyper Beam versus the Vigoroth. Mule versus Cresselia isn't that great either, but uh, it might be manageable. I go for Fire Punch here. This this will take out the Menabuzz for sure. Menabuzz is bulky, but not that bulky. In comes the Vigoroth, like expected. Four Mitchells, and I get to the Hyper Beam. This will do a lot of damage to the Vigoroth. Look at this. <laughs> oh my. It's a lot of damage coming from a Diggers B. I bring in the Cresselia to tank this Body Slam. Didn't want my Diggers B to get farmed down. Might be useful for a potential uh, catch switch later. In comes the Mew. Mew in this meta, you run sh uh, Shadow Claw and usually Wild Shard Surf, which is why I'm waiting till the last round to throw my move, just in case he wants to throw Wild Charge soon, because then he's debuffed and his Boom Boss will do more. Unfortunately, uh, he didn't wild charge though because he knows that's just a stupid move. He goes for a surf here. Ah uh, man, I should have no shield at that. Well, I was thinking about no shooting the bait there, but I didn't. So now he gets to the wild charge. Does a lot of damage. Doesn't kill me though. Over farm slightly because if I want any chance here, I have to get to the move before this Vigoroth gets to a move. Grass knot kills the Mew. Can I can I get to the grass knot here? I barely get to the grass knot. I take out the Vigoroth and I get the win. This was game one in our best of three, and luckily I was able to take another victory uh, after it as well. So because of that, we were able to move on to the semifinals. Really epic battles. So how do you join or make a faction? Well, first off, you need a group of players to play with. Seven to ten per team. So get together a group of friends, find some people in your local PvP groups or in global PvP uh, groups uh, maybe you could even find some in my discord server link in the description you know if anyone wants to start like a like a team tactical faction that would be pretty cool if, if you want that let me know maybe uh, maybe i could help uh, make that happen also in the Sylph arena factions which uh or Sylph arena factions discord which or the Sylph arena discord which i'll also link down in the description there's also a looking for factions uh channel and there's a lot of people in here looking for a faction so pick up people from here uh post your own data in here and you can find together a group like that as well once you have that 
go to self.gg, the website where everything is taking place, log in, uh, add to me, top right, I'm already logged in, uh, logged in, so I can't show that, but, you know, it's, we all know how to log into websites, right? Uh, and if you don't, um, there are other tutorials for that. Uh, anyway, uh, then, uh, add arena info, there's a little factions tab right here, a uh, little bit more information about factions is right there. I, I would really suggest you read that. And also the tab to create a faction here. And in this tab, uh, you just pick a name, a logo, logo, a region where you want to participate in. It's important to, to know, even if you're European, you're allowed to compete in the North American faction. But you have to realize that you also has, have to adapt to North American times. So, yeah, unless you want to play in the middle of the night, I would suggest to stay in your region. <laughs> All right, that is smart. Otherwise, it's going to be hard to, you know, link up with people. Uh, and that's basically it. You could add some other stuff, but create your faction. And there you go. You are in. Uh, and then the next thing you got to do is once the new season starts, the new season starts in like one, like two weeks from now. I'll, I'll put a text up here with the exact date because I don't know exactly. Once the new season starts, uh, here in this tab, upcoming faction cycles, there will be like a register uh, now link and you have to register your faction to the new cycle, all right? And then you're in like that. Enjoy. If you're just starting a new faction, you will start all the way down in the lowest rank, the open tier. But if you keep on winning, you will slowly climb up uh, further and you know maybe one day you'll make it to emerald as well and you'll be able to face my faction the eu emperors too that's basically all i had to say about how chill factions work let's just get into the rest of these battles i'll be showcasing one for each one of my teammates let's take a look at this battle between savage boy and swagron of infinity go white two absolute beasts in the master league teams again on the right side Savage Boy looking quite good with that Kyogre since he did decide to ban that Dialga and Mewtwo off of Swagron's team. A Palkia also looking quite strong for Savage Boy because of that. Uh, the Gyarados could be a huge issue for Savage Boy though. Melmodel also looking kind of troublesome which is why we see this Garchomp elite from, from him and he does pick up the Melmodel which is very very good. In comes the Gyarados though. Like I said it's a big problem without bringing Dialga. She didn't bring this time. This thing can run through uh, the team. Polkia doesn't have the worst matchup here though because well even though the Dragon Breaths are super effective this Dragon Tills are still doing so so much back. He's not gonna be able to win switch advantage here but the very minimum he will be able to burn a shield which he did to the, there and he gets to another Aqua Tail. This will do a good chunk of damage and put him in a range for a potential farm down of either Pokemon, really. I think he will go into Garchomp here, though, because uh, Garchomp is such a dominant matchup against Melmodel that this health probably isn't that important anyway. What is in the back, though, from Swagron's side? It is the Walrein, so losing Switch Advantage is actually quite big because Garchomp really doesn't want to see the wall right we have a kyogre out here though with a shield advantage uh which can do a lot of work versus both the melmodel and the wall right though both are incredibly spammy though which is still quite a problem because these shields are gonna go down quickly one surf coming out here from the big blue will gonna not take a shield actually i was expecting them to shield that but doesn't shield it Probably gonna shoot. Actually, probably lets this go and just plans to sweep with the war. I know. Actually, shoots it up. Are we gonna see a shield on the rock slide here? We are not. This Kyogre is almost dead. He's really gonna have to hope this Garchomp can take out the war. But this is a Dragon Ground type versus an Ice type. His moves are double super effective. Garchomp does not like even this Powder Snow. It's gonna go for the Outrage here. This will do a lot of damage uh, versus the war. Doesn't kill it though, but one Dragon Tail is enough and will now be able to take out the Melmodel as well. Barely gets to the Centum before the Melmodel gets to the super power, takes out the Melmodel and it is a really close game, GG. Next up, we got Inadequance versus Toshi of the Elite Four Champions who we faced in the quarter finals of the World Championship. Inadequance batting this wireless and Galf to make his own Electrics and Pelipper much stronger. 
and then Toshi bring banning Escalf and Quack, which makes the Warmer Dam and the Eridos a little bit more uh, of a threat. The Lantern of, on the opposing side also looks quite scary though, which in Eloquence does lead his Pellet Parade to, which is not great. Safe switches into the Galv. In comes Eridos with a little bit of an energy lead. Uh, this might be okay for the Yellow Spider here. Throws a Discharge immediately, hoping for no shield probably because... I think most players would throw a lunge there to debuff early. Doshi's Halt coming though, shooting up the, the Discharge, which is not great. Uh, gonna throw another Discharge here after shooting the Ariados' lunge. You really wanna try to flip the switch advantage here. Getting Pelipper onto that Lantern would be absolutely awful. Gets another Discharge here. This will do a significant amount of damage to the Ariados. It's gonna shoot this up because this lunge would knock out. And Anakin didn't throw any lunges, which means this does full damage, so they'll definitely kill. Shoots it up. Flipped switch now. Pretty good. But the thing is, his best answer to the lantern that's left on the team is still his own lantern. So this is still quite scary, because if the lantern is able to take out Anakin's lantern, it can probably also take out the Pelipper afterwards if it has enough health. So this is not great. Fortress, though, is pretty good for the Pelipper. Since at most this thing throws rock tombs at it, which it can easily tank one. Here comes a lantern now from Toshi. Nenekun switches in his own lantern very quickly now. Again, he is in an energy uh, deficit. This Thunderbolt does almost 50%. So this is going to be really close. If the Sparks plus the next Thunderbolt knock out this lantern, this Pelipper is definitely going down. Thunderbolt coming out here. Can in eloquence reach another Thunderbolt? That is really uh, the question here. He reaches it with 1 HP. This will take out the Lantern. Now there's still a Fortress in the back though. We'll get a little, tiny little bug bite here of energy of the Lantern. Uh, can it get to two Rock Tombs here to take out the Pelipper? I don't think so, but it will be quite close. One comes out, doesn't kill. Pelipper gets to the Weather Ball. And it is a really, really good... And close game, really well played by an eloquence there. Next up, we got Elephant Flushivers, It's Jorginho of Infinigo White in the dungeon meta. Very interesting meta. Como O looks very good on both sides of the field, which is why both players banned the wall rain of each other because that just opens up a Como O so much more. That also makes Swampert really good on both sides. Uh, Elephant Flush also bent a Jellicent to make his Heracross a very powerful. Jorginho doesn't really have many great answers for that. Uh, let's just head into this battle. We'll see Como O versus Regiseal. This is pretty good for Como O. But Regiseal can definitely still do a lot of damage here. Focus Blast does a lot. And it's always risky to throw your close combat like immediately here. Because the chance of them catching is quite large. Elephant gonna throw the close combat, then switch into Heracross. Does have three counters for Registeel, basically. Uh, Como O is a little bit more of a softer answer, but Heracross and Swamp are definitely solid. Had to shield up that Zap Cannon, though, because it would do a lot of damage versus uh, the Cross. In comes a Swampert here. Actually, a positive matchup for Heracross, but Swampert does better versus Heracross than it does versus Como O. So it makes a lot of sense. He brings in the Swampert here. Let's it go, though. Heracross now very low, probably gonna get farmed by maybe, oh, the own Como O, of course. Who goes for the Rock Blast here. Had the close combat, should have thrown a close combat, really. Hopefully they still got a shield, though. All right. Luckily, still a shield. This would have been quite devastating if uh, Jorginho didn't uh, shield that. Probably not saying that name right, but hopefully it's good enough. Uh, gonna let this move go. Wants to keep the shields for Swampert. Knows he can kill this with basically a Hydro Cannon at this point. No shielding this move most likely. Because there is still a Registeel in the back. Which a Focus Blast would do way more. Uh, Jorginho tries to catch the Hydro on Registeel. Not going to happen though. Elephant can just go for an Earthquake here to take out uh, the Regi. And now he only needs a Hydro, he only needs a hydro to kill it. But he <laughs> goes for the freaking Earthquake. He goes for the Earthquake and gets it at 1 HP. Wow. We ended up winning this bout versus Infinigo White 11 to 10. Let's say he didn't survive that Dragon Tail. We would have lost. That was, that was a very unnecessarily risky play. But it paid off, so good job.
<laughs> Next up, another one of my battles this time against Trainer Steiner of Magnus PvP in the semifinals. This battle, we're really gonna see what made this show 8 band 2 format super interesting. Because I brought a Vesper Queen this time. And Vesper Queen, even in the Comet Field meta that we're playing, is not common at all. But it is a pretty decent core breaker. The problem is, it gets destroyed by fire types and a load of Ninetales. Which are basically on every team. But since we're able to ban two Pokemon, I can just ban those. And then Vesper Queen becomes a monster. So that's what I did against uh, Trainer Steiner here. I banned the Alone Ninetales, banned the Macargo, and that just makes my Vesper Queen super strong. Also makes my Manibus super strong. And you're gonna really see them do a lot of work here. I end up leading my Magnezo into the Lickitung, which is really good. In comes the Vigoroth. I bring Cresselia here, which is also a really good counter to. Uh, the Vigo. Uh, at this point, I am already looking pretty uh, good because my Vesper Queen has, hasn't even uh, hasn't even been shown yet, and I'm pretty sure that whatever he's in the, has in the back is probably a pretty uh, good uh, for me, uh, for the Vesper Queen at least. Vigoroth, even though it does get countered by Crest, does do quite a lot of work here. These Bolly Stamps come out really quick, and they do a significant amount of damage. This Bolly Stamp won't kill me, but it will put me deep into the red maybe i should have thrown my grass node earlier uh, but this is still fine this is uh less farm for the licky tongue which is good he actually shields that move keeps the vigoroth alive and brings in the vigoroth here pretty good play because the vigoroth can still be quite a problem later uh not for vest queen though well it could be because it still has enough health to where I can't really Fury Cut her down, and Body Slams will add up on Vesper Queen. And Counters and Body Slams will also add up on Mandibus. So, honestly, a good save there. This Licky is just gonna Body Slam now, got a little bit of energy, and these Body Slams will start adding up onto my Mandibus. Gonna foul play again. Uh, normally, Comet matches don't take that long, but we're really playing with three versus three tanks here oh i guess vigoroth is that not that much of a tank but i am playing with three tanks he is playing with a tank there's just a lot of time being wasted with charge moves here <laughs> vigoroth comes on again i don't want the thing to be able to farm up too much first my menibus so i bring in the queen uh, i'm gonna show this body slam though because i expect it will be the hardest hitting move in comes the diggers b actually that is, that is uh, his best answer versus vespa queen Probably, because these Fire Punches, of course, are super effective. But Fire Punch is a weak move. Diggersby is very low attack. So Diggersby or Vesper Queen can actually still take two Fire Punches from the Diggersby. They actually do the same amount as Body Slam, which is why you don't really see me shooting them. I probably could, should, uh, shoot this one. Um, but uh, I don't need to, because I can also shoot a Body Slam later. Because they do the exact same damage. Anyway, again, uh, x this uh this diggers be now. Another fire punch coming through. This won't kill me. The, the Vigoroth has a little bit of energy, but not that much. I'm just kind of expecting the Vigoroth to, go, to come in. Uh, so I actually bring in Mandibus. Actually, I think I bring in Mandibus because I'm close to a move. And their defense is all dropped, so I want to get, get it off as soon as possible. I do. Brings the diggers be very, very low. In comes the Vigoroth. We'll throw a body slam into my Mandibus, but this is so fine. Vespa Queen. I don't think dies to a body slam, and I have an X-Scissor. Actually, it would die, but I have an X-Scissor loaded. I kill the Vigoroth, and we're actually gonna see the timer run out. That is a timeout victory. I won't show you the next two games, but I actually ended up winning the next two as well. Uh, with another timeout victory too. And yeah, this was just a showcase of... If you bring the right Pokemon in the show 8 po uh, format, and you make the right bands, you can really just steamroll, which... Is a fun extra bit of strategy in this format. This format's only for the world championships though. In regular factions, it's still show six uh, pick three, which is also really, really great. Next up, we got Guido versus Lindo's Wings of Magnus PvP in the semi finals. Guido, one of our most consistent players currently. He hasn't lost a bout in 10 weeks. He's really hoping to add a 11th to his streak right now versus Lindo's Wings. Starts off with not that great of a lead though. Dragology can win the two shields here versus Escavalier, even though you are throwing resisted moves and Aquatil's not that strong. 
A Burnett Scarf's Lurker is very squishy. If you hit one Aquatel, you can fire all, down all the way. But you're going to have to go through Shield Deficit, which is not great. So Hido decides, you know, let's just catch the Drill Run. Onto the Mandibus. Mandibus is very strong against Lindo's Wings, actually. Because Hido decided to bring uh, or ban his Agron and Articuno. Two pretty hard Mandibus answers. There's still Sudowoodo on uh, Wings' side, which is a problem. But Hido was not expecting it, so... Uh, feels very safe just switching in his Mandibus to catch a move there. And as you see, no Sudabudu on the opposing side. It is the opposing Mandibus, uh, which, uh, you know, is super fine. It's super fine. It's not great because he also has the Crustle on the back, and you would really prefer just the Crustle on the Mandy. But uh, hopefully, maybe there's also a good matchup for Crustle on the back. Actually, we're still going to see the Crustle on the Mandy because Hido can switch in his Crustle into the Mandibus here since the switch timers are misaligned. Uh, Wings' uh, Mandy was locked in there for a little bit longer. Does switch it out here though into the Gouji we go. Throws an Exeter to get the shield. Hopefully, Rock Slide will do a chunk. Uh, luckily, we do see a shield. If they called that bait, that would have been quite devastating. But luckily, they didn't. Gonna let this Aqua Tail uh, go now. Bringing in the own Dragalgy. They're pretty even on health. So they should die at the same point here. Uh, which is why Hiro decides to throw the Aqua Tail here uh, to take a shield. Gets a Dragon Tail through here, which is quite big, actually. Is he gonna be able to farm down this Dragalgy? He is able to farm this down. Has the Aqua Tail loaded? Two Pokemon in the back, but I think they both died to one charge move, basically. So, can just throw the Aqua Tail, no matter what comes in, throws it. I think this brings the Mandibus low or kills, brings it low. And Dragon Tail's down the uh, incoming S Cavalier, has a move on the Mandy too, throws it. And this should kill the opposing Mandibus as well. That was a pretty chaotic game, but very well played by Guido. And he actually uh, won the best of three versus Wings as well. 2 1, I'm pretty sure. No, 3 0, actually, he won this, so he's still on an undefeated 11 bout run tune into the finals this thursday to find out if he can win 12 bouts in a row next we got scaffo versus pronov of the elite four champions in the open great league meta scaffo banned warren skarmory so his venusaur will become super strong really only struggles against the a9 which is actually a Pretty, pretty decent problem for Scafo's team uh, since Pronov did decide to ban the Galarian Stunfisk, which was supposed to be uh, the hardest counter. Still de pretty decent though, since it is a Powder Snow A9, which we did figure out in the first game. Uh, we know the Sableye actually does okay there, and Skarmy does generally lose this matchup, but is even. So seeing it here in the lead, uh, when you got your Venusaur in the back, is quite nice. You're going to lose out on this matchup, but you'll be able to bring the A9 pretty low. And then hopefully once once you have a shield advantage, uh, the Venusaur can do a lot of work. Uh, Scaffo, gonna be able to get to another Sky Attack here. This will definitely hurt the A9 quite a bit. Yeah, puts it into the red. A9, gonna reach another move here though. This is the Weather Ball. This doesn't KO, I think. But afterwards, uh, the A9 can definitely farm down. Actually, no, it couldn't farm down. Had to throw another move. Scaffo could decide to go for a switch advantage here, but that's not worth it. You have a Venusaur and a Sableye, which both do really good with energy lead. So he's bringing the Sableye here. Actually take the Weather Ball. Scaffo counting these moves, knowing it's not Dazzling Gleam. Knowing he can easily take it. Gets a little bit of an energy lead. In comes the Sableye. Scaffo going to be able to get to the foul play first here, since he did have that little bit of an energy lead. This will hurt if the Sableye lets it go, which it does. Brings the Sableye into the yellow. Barely doesn't reach another foul play. Opponent really counting well with it there. Throwing the second foul play right before Scaffo was able to get to it. Scaffo gonna throw this immediately though. This point this could still be a pretty difficult match if it's like a Venusaur in the back. Since it could farm down Scaffo's Venusaur or Scaffo's Sableye. Actually thinking about it, I think the, I think the Sableye would have still reached a foul play. So probably not actually. Oh, in comes the Oxys now. This is really good for the Sable. Yeah, if it was Venusaur, it would have been a bigger problem. But since the uh, Sable did have a, a move, I think it would have still been fine. The Oxys here doesn't reach two Psycho Boosts, hopefully. And then the Venusaur should be fine. Yeah, Venusaur reaches the Frenzy here. This will kill the DD. Take it out. And now can he farm down the Sable? He can, and it is a good game. Finally, we got the Nut versus House Stark of the Elite Four Champions in the Orchard League. We're just gonna head right into this one. Good lead for the Nut with Swampert into Galf. In comes Warrain. And 
at this point, uh, do not actually realize that how Stark is trying to bait something out here. This is probably an ABB line with the Obstagoon in the back, which at this point would actually not be too good for the nut. Because the Obstagoon can probably beat or get close to beating both Swampert and Warrind. So once he switches in the Galf here, it's probably wise to save uh, your Heracross. Gonna throw one Rock Blast though before doing that. And then I would assume you bring in the Swampert here. Yeah, saving the Heracross. Very smart. Gonna get to the Hydro here at the same time as the Galf gets to a move. This should only be a lunge though, hopefully. Yes, yeah, Swampert takes that easy. This Galf will have to use a shield uh, if it wants to uh, survive, but actually lets it go. And it does end up being the goon in the back. So very good call by the nut here, expecting the goon. If you didn't switch out at Heracross there, I think this would have been much tougher. It's still going to be tough though, because the Heracross is very low. This goon might be able to farm down the Swampert. And the Heracross is in range where like a Night Slash knocks out now. So yeah. It is still not looking too good. With Heracross or this this Obstagoon proving to be a big trouble. Gonna tank a move on Warren here and then probably switch into... No, actually doesn't switch into the cross just yet. Gonna wait until the Obstagoon throws a couple more moves, I would assume. But how Stark knows that he needs the energy for the Heracross if it comes in. So farms up to 100 again before throwing his next move. Throws a Night Slash. Uh, the nut brings in the Heracross here. Gonna get a counter in. Hopefully gonna get a couple more counters in. But yeah, the Obstagoon had farmed up so much. Had so much energy stored. And we'll get to another move here. And wow, that doesn't even knock out. That's actually bad. Because now the goon will reach the move. Before the wall rank can reach the Icicle Spear. If this knocks out, this is game over. Cross Shop doesn't take out the wall rank. Survives with 1 HP. Icicle Spear will knock out the goon, and that is a really tight and good game. That was the final battle for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, this Thursday, the finals of the World Championships will be streamed on the Silver Arena Twitch channel. So go check that out if you want to see some epic battles. If you want to support the EU Emperors, make sure to spam some penguins in the chat, all right? It'll give us the energy we need. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed Please consider leaving a like and a sub. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.